One of the advantages of the Darwin integration into Microsoft CRM is the ability to use workflows to automate your business um, processes. Um, in a prior uh, demo, I showed you how to do a simple workflow that creates an email when something changes. In that case, I used an example of a, an employee changing a state in their record. So what I'll be doing in this workflow that I'll be showing you is I'm actually showing you how to create tasks and calendar items within CRM. And if you also happen to be using Outlook, the tasks and calendar items will appear in your typical Outlook area in the system. So uh, to get started, we go into CRM, which I have up here on screen. You can access it either through the web product or you can actually access it directly through um, Outlook itself either way, depending if you're using Outlook or not, and you go into the processes area. So when you get into the processes area, you see your list of, of workflows right here. So within these workflows, what we can do is click the new button and create a new workflow. So what the work this workflow is going to do is whenever a state changes for an employee, regardless if the employee does it themselves through the web or a user does it in the back office in Darwin, we're going to create a task and we're also going to create a calendar appointment just to show you both examples to let the tax department or whomever go ahead and, and do whatever steps they need to do whenever an employee uh, makes a state change like make sure their taxes are okay etc. So we're going to name the new process um, appointment and task for employee state change. And remember, I'm using the employee changing a state as my example here. It basically can be based upon any data point for the clients and employees. So this is just an example of how to create these tasks and uh, appointments based upon any data changing in our back office. So in this case, we're talking about an employee. So the entity that this workflow will run on is the employee entity. And the category, of course, will be a workflow. So by clicking OK, we'll get to our workflow process screen right here. So this will decide when this workflow will run. So the scope is always going to be organization because it's a business or it's an organization-wide business rule. I'm going to start when not when the record is created because I don't care when the employee first comes on, but when the record field changes. So whenever the state field changes, that's when we're going to go ahead and run this workflow. So you simply look up the field that you want this workflow to run on when, it, when that field changes. In this case, when the state field change, we'll go ahead and click OK. So at this point, whenever that state field changes, whatever we have down here, this workflow will actually run at that point. So last time we did this, we just sent an email. Let's look at the other steps that are possible. So when you click the Add Step button right here, there's a whole bunch of other steps beyond sending the email. In this case, we're actually creating a task and we're going to create an appointment, two separate things. We're just going to use the create record option here. And this is what's really powerful about workflows. You can create and update records and we'll do a different video for updating records. But I can go ahead and click create record and I can create anything I want in the system. Regardless of what type of data point it is, I can create anything I want. In this case, we'll just start off with an appointment. So. This is an appointment that will appear in CRM, and once again, if you're using Outlook, it will be actually a calendar appointment within Outlook itself. So we'll put in here appointment reminder to check tax records. Since we're changing the state, we're going we're gonna to remind somebody to check this employee's tax records. So this is just a description of what we're doing. So we're creating an appointment, and we click the Set Properties button. And we'll see the fields that you, if you're using Outlook, you're pretty familiar with. These are the fields that are, that are going to be displayed in the Outlook appointment. So the subject is going to be this. Now just like with the email version, we can do a mixture of dynamic and static fields. So we can say something like this. Please double check the tax record for. And we're going to go ahead and dynamically grab the employee's name. So if we come down and we just grab uh, employee here that will contain the employee name. Click Add. Make sure it's in the right spot and OK. So when this appointment appears on somebody's calendar it will actually say please double check the tax record for whatever employee that we're working with at this point. And then we can have required people and optional people associated with this uh, appointment. If you leave it blank it will just go to the owner. But I'll just use my 
dummy user that I use for um, CRM demos right here. And when you type in part of the name, it tries to match it. In this case, there's too many people that use that email address. So I'm going to go ahead and look this up. And this is going to be a user, just so we make sure that we see it in the demonstration. I'm just assigning that to myself in this case. You could also do something dynamic, where I could say assign it to the owner of the employee or the owner of the, the account, the client. And that way it will automatically appear on that person's calendar. And we can even be more detailed if we wanted to. We can put it on the HR reps uh, um, person for that, that account or the payroll operator's uh, account. So whoever we want to give this to, we can, depending on how much you're tracking against that account. So anything else that we need to do here? And then we need to dynamically put in a start and end time. So we'll say this is due within a day. So we're going to give them one day after that this workflow, which is called a process, starts. So this is kind of this is kind of your now. The process execution time means right now, whenever this happens in the system. So they change the state, this workflow kicks off. We'll give them one day after that to get this done. So they're gonna double check that. And then we're gonna say that probably is gonna take them about 15 minutes. So we want to track this because it'll track how much time people are spending on different accounts, which can give us deliverable reports later. So the user can always change this, but we'll put in an expected time of 15 minutes. So we'll say one day and 15 minutes after the workflow runs. That's what it says right there. And put that in, and there it is. And then if we want any data to appear in the body of the reminder, if somebody's putting in notes or something, we can actually do the same type of thing we did with the email and put it in static and dynamic values. So we can say, please double check the tax information for, and once again, we'll go ahead and grab an employee right here, name, and so it'll put the employee name right there. And then maybe we want to give the user a link to the employee record. We can actually do that too. Say link to employee record. And I can go in and grab another field called a record URL. We saw this with the email workflow also. So if I come in and find, um, there it is, record URL dynamic, that's going to give the user a direct link to this employee record. So they'll be able to click on it within the, within the Outlook appointment or within the, the web-based appointment, and it'll open up the employee record on screen. Okay, so that's all we need to do for the, for the appointment. It's just like basically like creating an appointment within Outlook or, or CRM, but I'm having the system do it for me automatically. So save and close that one. That's a one-step workflow like we did last time. But we can have this workflow be as many steps as we want. Maybe somebody else is going to be assigned a task associated with this. So let's create a task now too. Once again, same step. Just create the record. And we'll do the same thing here, except we'll say this is going to be a task. And that's just a, that's just a description of the steps we're taking. We're going to go ahead and create the task, which will be under T right here. There's the task. And set the properties. So similar proposition is the appointment. So this will be a task and we'll say, please double check tax information for, and we'll grab the employee name again. So go in and grab the employee, click add and OK, there it is. And then we'll just put in link to employee record. So they can have that same dynamic link directly to the employee. And we'll go ahead and grab that record URL dynamic field. There it is. Click add. And put it right there. There it is. And we can put other information on here too. We could put in, you know, employee. If we wanted, instead of linking to the employee, we can have the employee phone number appear right there. So if I wanted to bring in anything else related to this employee or to the client, I can grab that information directly from the screens. So there's the phone number field, and I'm going to put that right there. Put an email address, anything else I want. And because this is a task, we'll go ahead and put in a due date here. Once again, we'll make this one, we'll give them two days to do this one, two days after process execution time. 
So we can go ahead and put that in there. And then because we have the fact that if you notice here, we have a value of the appointment when that was created right here, I could actually daisy chain tasks and appointments to kind of have a workflow process. The appointments do this, then three days after the appointment due is due, a task is due, then three days after that, another thing is due. So I won't be that complex here, but it is possible to kind of have a series of tasks um, for these types of things. And then we'll put in an expected duration. We'll say it normally takes us five minutes to do something like this. So once that's done, we want to make sure we put in an owner here. It will default to the, the, the standard owner if I don't put one in. So I can put in a, a static owner, or I could do something like this. I can come in and say, whoever owns this account, that's actually who, the, who will get this task. So instead of putting in a, a static owner, it's actually going to be dynamic this case. So it'll look at who owns that account, and that's who's in charge of this, this task. So once I've saved that, my workflow's done. I'm creating an appointment and a task. It took me just a couple minutes to get that done. Whenever that state field changes, this, will, this, this workflow will kick off. So I'll go ahead and activate this. That means just turning the workflow on, and we're done. So now if I go back over to my back office, I'll bring up an employee, and let's bring up uh, Melanie Rockford right here. We'll go ahead and change your state from Ohio to Michigan and click Save. So we've done that. So what's happening behind the scenes, the synchronization is synchronizing the data, obviously. If I go into today's activity logs here on in my back office, I'll actually be able to see the um, change here too. So if I come in, I can see there it is at 4.15 p.m. The state was changed from Ohio to Michigan by this user uh, on this screen right here. So in the back office, I'm mean, sorry, in CRM, let's see if it's uh, actually finished synchronizing. So I'm going to go back over to my employee list right here and bring up Melanie. And here's Melanie Rockford. Open up her screen here. And we can see, there it is. Michigan has already been synchronized over. So the workflows are running behind the scenes right now. And so we never have to do this, but if we want to see workflows running, we can actually see the workflows right there. And we can see the workflow has already run. It ran within the, the or a few seconds of that being done. So if I open up the workflow, we can see this is what happened. This is the workflow I created. It created the appointment and it created the task. And we can see from legacy workflows, these are the, the email ones we saw from the prior ones. So you obviously probably wouldn't want to have all these notifications on, but this is just what's possible. I can open up this appointment right here and I can see it. Please double check the tax record for Melanie Rockford. Here's all the information about it. Same thing with the task, it's right here. Please double check the tax record for Melanie Rockford and all that information is there. That's the web-based version. But if you're using the Outlook version, you can actually go into your calendar or your task list and you'll see it's already appeared on my calendar. So even though I didn't type this on my calendar, I can see please double check the tax record for Melanie Rockford. I can see the information here. We know it's regarding Melanie, so I can click that link or if for some reason I'm somewhere where this isn't regarding is not showing up, I can click this link and it will open up Melanie's Rock, Re, Melanie Rockford record, Rockford's record right here on screen. And so then I can do anything else I need to, look at her tax info, follow up, anything else I want to do, you know, call her or send her an email. So th those tasks and appointments will link directly to the records they're supposed to. And in fact, if I go look at Melanie Rockford's activities, I would be able to search by any of these, and I can see right here, here's all the, the, the activities that we just created based upon those workflows. So within a few minutes, it's very easy to set up workflows that will create tasks and appointments, assign them to the correct users, and make sure those things are followed upon correctly whenever data changes in your Darwin back office. All right, thank you.